Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the BMW Group and thank you for being here so early. And Happy New Year to all of you. This is the fourth uh, time we have participated at CES. As you know, we love to surprise people at CES and give you a glimpse uh, into our visions for tomorrow. Last year, we gave a first look into the future of mobility. Perhaps you remember our i8 Roadster we showed. Our BMW Vision Future Interaction showed how our drivers and passengers uh, could interact with their vehicles in the near future. And we have demonstrated in the past years technologies that are in our production cars today. For example, our gesture control, our remote 3D view system, and our BMW iCar with its smart watch uh, connectivity. And yes, today you can order your new BMW with all these features. For years, the BMW group has been a pioneer for automotive connectivity and digital systems, all designed with a clear goal, to make mobility simple and flexible. And we have put already 8.5 million connected cars on the roads, more than any other car maker. And we will be an industry leader when it comes to technologies for autonomous driving, too. In fact, we will offer safe, fully automated driving in our BMW Next in 2021. But more about that in a few minutes. Today, we are well uh, on our way to autonomous driving. BMWs have many semi-automated features that increase comfort and safety for drivers and passengers. Examples are the steering and lane keep assist up to 130 miles per hour, extended hands-off times, the lane change assist, and the remote control parking system. The BMW 5 Series test vehicles here in Las Vegas are taking things one step further. Thanks to only very slight adaptions by our developers, drivers can leave the assistance systems in control of the cars on defined roads. For that purpose, we have produced high-definition maps to showcase this here in Las Vegas. On your test drive, we will show you how you can spend your time while being driven autonomously. For example, you can point at buildings to receive information based on location-based services or using offers of Amazon Prime. Last year at CES, we presented our personalized digital mobility assistant, BMW Connected. This intelligent service uh, makes our customers' lives easier and it's available right now, 12 months later, in the US, Europe and China. The backbone of BMW Connected is a flexible surface, surf, uh, uh, service architecture called Open Mobility Cloud. Today, we are demonstrating future services which could be built on that cloud. For example, the ability to speak to their Amazon Echo device to communicate with their vehicle. They can ask Alexa for their car's range or start their car remotely even set destinations on the vehicle's navigation system. But we are also improving voice control inside our vehicles. For example, by integrating Microsoft Cortana inside BMWs. Today, you will be able to experience this during the test drives too. While all these innovations will make the driving experience more enjoyable and safer, we know that the holy grail of fully autonomous driving will not be easy to reach. How do we replace the human brain, the recognition and decision making with an intelligent system? Many innovators and some market, marketing pros are trying to perfect this. I think most of them will fail. But we at BMW will have a different approach that makes me confident that we will succeed. What makes us different? We are not only focused on the what 
the vehicles, the technologies and the systems. The critical success factor will be the how. How to execute more successfully than our competitors. How to move faster without losing strategic direction. And how to build the best partnerships. How to win this race? We are following a different road than many other companies. In my area of responsibility, R&D, we describe our approach in just 10 words. Act like a startup, deliver like a grown-up. We at BMW are grown-ups, we deliver on our promises. We have the experience to validate all systems to a very high level before offering them to the customer. At the same time, we are agile and fast. And we can be quite disruptive, like a startup. Take, for example, our Project I. The first in initiatives for Project I focused on electromobility and sustainability. We delivered very fast solutions like electric drivetrains, lightweight technologies and services. These technologies are already powering our production cars. They are the new normal for BMW. Now we are moving ahead with Project I 2.0, which will empower us in a similar way. Project I 2.0 is our journey towards fully autonomous driving. We have learned how to make our processes faster and leaner, both within the BMW group and in our growing network of partners. We at BMW Group know that no one of us is smarter in all these technologies than all of us. That's why we collaborate with the best, the best-in-class technology partners. Together with these champions in their fields, we are developing autonomous driving. Two of these champions are here with me today. Please welcome on stage the CEO of Intel, Brian Krasnick, and Amnon Chashua, one of the founders of Mobileye. Please enter the stage. <laughs> and both of you just partnered with BMW at here. Thank yes. you for that. So right. also on high definition, real time maps, we are partners now too. So my question to you, yes, we have driven already some thousand miles with our test cars by year end, I think. A yep. huge and steep increase. How do you see um, the situation? What were the progresses we made since we met last time in July? On sure. So since July, I think uh, what's really been fun to watch is the, the engineering teams have really gotten together, right? So it's easy for us to stand up here on stage and say, we're all going to work together and we're going to go build this uh, vehicle. But it's when the engineers and the teams get together and start to really design this end-to-end -end solution that we're talking about. And so since, since six months ago, roughly, when we all met, the engineers have been meeting. I'd say we have um, this end-to-end -end system now defined very well as a team, uh, what each of the components are, what each of us needs to deliver. Uh, and I think it's a very compelling answer where uh, by sharing this development uh, here between the three companies, uh, other companies now will have the, the opportunity to benefit from this, right? This is really meant to be an open, scalable network uh, 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 platform that will allow others to really build off of this uh, uh, technology. So it's, it's been great progress in the six months. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> we, we established 19 uh, work streams, both on uh, sensing the computer vision, uh, processing uh, radars and, and radars, uh, fusion. We started also on mapping our uh, you know, agreement with, with here is, is in the context of our work with, the, with BMW, of course, and with the consortium. Uh, we established a work stream on, on driving uh, policy, but a very complicated strategy planning of how a vehicle can merge into, into traffic. We have a very significant work stream with, uh, with BMW. We had... Uh, a car driving uh, kind of lots of miles and internal uh, tests which were very, very interesting and, and successful. So I think things are going very, very well. In six months, we established uh, quite a lot. Thank you. Brian, looking forward, what are the next steps to establish our modular platform? Well, as Amnon said, we have these 19 work streams and 
And, and really the objective of those is to build this scalable platform. So there are going to be options of components that you can, you can build from, right? So the, the visioning system and the computing system and the connectivity and um, really building those out and starting to get the software and hardware to actually be produced. Uh, and, and that's really the next six months of, of these 19 work streams is to actually start uh, putting together a product and getting it on the road and starting to learn and understand. And, and this is important because this allows our uh, partners to, to take these components and build from those as well if others want to build. And I think that's what's unique here is we're trying to build this open platform that will allow other companies to benefit from the research that the three companies here are doing. Yeah, uh, to follow up what, what Brian just said, I think what sets us apart is that we are inclusive. This program is, is rather than trying to set us apart from the world, we tell the world, come and join us. There's lot to be, lots to be gained by, by sharing data, by sharing uh, resources. You know, but at the peak of this program, we're talking about hundreds of hundreds of test vehicles. This is, is hugely expensive, lots of resources. If, if this can be shared with additional uh, affiliated uh, partners, uh, sharing of uh, data will be driving over many cities, but we can't cover the entire world. Other partners can, uh, can join us. There's lots of standardizations uh, uh, to be done by the time these vehicles would be approved to, uh, to run on roads. Um, so what really sets us apart, this is uh, the first inclusive program that I'm aware of. All others are, are very protective, are very, are guarding their territory, and we are saying the opposite. Come, come and join us. So thank you very much. We will see you already again at the DLD in Munich in yes. two weeks. Yes, looking forward to it. <laughs> yes. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you. Bye, Mike. <laughs> and as Brian and Amnon has mentioned, 2017 will be a year of much progress in our cooperation. We will leave Munich, so we will have around about 40 very, very high sophisticated test vehicles, which will be used in, in Europe, in the US, and one or two in Jerusalem too, I assume. So I'm looking really forward to that. And uh, when we do our first test drive without any driver, <laughs> it will be a thrill. <laughs> Combining an open architecture with standards is our way. This is why we three of us remain open to new partners with OEMs, as you mentioned, tier ones or other tech companies. We have talked now a lot about autonomous driving, but it's not only about being driven, but also what do you experience when you, are, when you spend the time in the car in another way than you are used today. It's about a personal and emotional user experience for the driver and the passengers. In the future, BMW drivers will have the choice to drive themselves and be the ultimate driver. We call it the boost mode. Or they can choose the ease mode, fully autonomous driving that gives them the opportunity to relax, work, or be entertained. The car will be, of course, seamlessly integrated in each customer's uh, personal environment. Every single place in the car will be the best place because every seat can be adjusted to the situation and the individual needs of everyone inside. In essence, we are redefining the mobility experience. To illustrate how this experience, this touch and feel can be achieved by technologies, I would like to show you a next step of our in-car user experience the BMW i Inside Future. Please. <laughs> this is a glimpse in the mid-future. It's not for tomorrow. <laughs> but beyond 2020, this will happen. This interior shows how we will bring even more freedom and sheer driving uh, pleasure to our customers. We have created a space uh, that inspires communication and interaction. For example, comfortable asymmetrical seats um, are perfect for relaxed conversation or watching entertainment on the screens. You can have, we call it me time, just relax and let the car drive you while you are listening to your favorite music from any seat, 
even without headphones. So it's your personal sound environment you will have on each uh, seat. Feeling more social? Spend the Wii time with easy interaction, an opportunity to play a game together with no time wasted thinking about the traffic. Here, life in the car may not differ much from life at home. Our BMW i Inside Future features a control display that is integrated into the dashboard and runs across its entire length for the driver and the passenger. We are also talking, taking our current touchscreen functions and BMW gesture control to a new level. We call this BMW Holoactive Touch, something seen before only in Hollywood movies. It projects a three-dimensional graphic in full color range into the vehicle interior. Users interact with a kind of free-floating touchscreen when a user enters a command, the system confirms it with actual tactile feedback produced by ultrasound waves. Another information is a personalized audio programming for both the driver and uh, front seat passenger. And for passengers in the rear, we have a widescreen display that folds down from the roof lining to show videos. I hope you have enjoyed this glimpse into the future. My colleagues and I look forward to welcoming you and showing you our BMW E Inside Future even in more detail. Thank you for attention and enjoy the CS. And Brian and Amnon, perhaps you can be on the stage again. <laughs>